Hi, Nancy here, and today I want to talk about putting a lifeline in knitting that's particularly lace knitting, which is probably the main thing a lifeline is for. Uh, it's really challenging if you have to pull your needle and you want to get your stitches back on or not lose them all together when you're dealing with all the yarn overs, which is what lace knitting is all about. One thing I like to tell people is when you're using a lifeline, this I'm using green, but this is not a color that I would use. I actually use white or off-white fine gauge cotton because I don't want anything that's fuzzy. I don't want anything that's going to fade and I don't want anything that's going to distort my stitches. So I make sure it's a, it's a small gauge fingering, sport weight usually works really well. I think this is DK. I'm using the green for the video so that you can see what I'm doing more, more easily. When you're putting a lifeline in, um, you can use your lifeline for two different reasons. You can just put it in willy-nilly when you think you need a lifeline, or you can actually have a system to it, which a lot of people do, where they'll say, you know, every 20 rows, I'm going to add a lifeline, and then I'm going to know at that row everything was in order. And what I mean by that, every stitch was accounted for, the pattern was right, so it's like it's a checks and balances that all your knitting's looking good. That way if there's a problem, you know everything to the above that, below that line is good. So if there's a problem, it has to be above that line. Uh, when you're using your lifeline, I always tell people, don't put it in on a yarn over row. Put it in on the rows that don't have the action. And that's typically a purl or knit row that breaks your pattern apart every so often. So that's real important. And the other thing, and this seems a little silly, write down the row you put it on. Because if you have to pull your needle and you're pulling this thing back, you're going to say, okay, yeah, that's great, it's there, but what row is it? So then you're going to have to go through the trouble of figuring out what row you're on. So just be sure you write it down. You can leave these in if you're if it's thin. That's one of the reasons I like thinner waist yarn because if you leave them in, they're not going to distort your stitches. And then when you're all done, just yank them out, and it's no big problem at all. So all you need to do this is actually I think was a pearl row I had done last. And excuse the clinging, love my addies, but they're noisy. And all I did was thread enough to go across, and I will actually put this just like when you're putting your stuff on waist yarn and slipping it off. The only thing is I'm not going to slide it off my needle. I'm just going to take it across all my stitches here. And I have so much yarn here that there we go. Okay, a little better here. Okay. And I just go across. If I put my um, took my needle off then I'd have the trouble of putting it back on. And what this does for anyone that's a newer knitter, it just ensures that if I pull that needle, it's not going to drop below that waist yarn. Yeah, you're going to have to work a little bit to get your needle back on. What I tell people is take a needle that's much smaller than the size you're working on when you put your stitches back on then transfer it onto your uh, correct size needle. It's a lot easier than trying to put it on a larger one. And it goes a lot faster. It's a little extra step, but I think it's worth it. So we're almost done here. And there we go. And then try not to split your yarn. I usually do that. The other thing, you notice this cotton, it slides well. And that's nice to know when you're going to take everything out. This got caught. So I'll pull it a little here. Okay. And there you go. It's in there safe and sound. And just continue on with your pattern. That's how you do a lifeline in lace knitting. 